My name is Daniel Scott with Udaya.com, and this is Average Yoga, a series of tutorials specifically designed for people who don't do yoga yet. Take what you want, leave what you don't, go at your own pace, and learn to build your practice from the ground up. Standing forward folds are great, especially if you know what you're doing, and especially if they feel good. Um, a lot of times, it's very easy just to see someone fold forward and think, oh, that's easy, and you fold forward, and you don't think about it too much. We're going to spend some time thinking about our forward folds so we can maximize the effectiveness and minimize the amount of effort that we put into it. So let's just define what a forward fold is. It's pretty simple. It's when you fold forward at the hips, head towards the ground. Now, in doing that, this becomes an inversion. When the head lowers below the heart, it becomes an inversion. This changes the direction of the blood flow. This changes the direction of the energy of the practice. It helps you ground. It helps you cool down. It helps you relax while maintaining balance as you're standing. Again, this is a standing forward fold. So basically, let's just make this as easy as possible. Don't just flop forward. Think about engaging and using the muscles to move the bones. Now, if you have very tight hips or hamstrings or anything and you can't touch the ground, I'd like you to have some props nearby. And these are bricks or blocks or whatever you call them where you're from. The idea is not to try to touch the ground with your hands, but have the blocks ready for you so they can become extensions of your arms so that you can use them to raise the ground up to you as opposed to having to lower yourself down to the ground with the arms and have that around your spine. So engage your core, draw your navel into your spine, Bend the knees so your hands slide just above the kneecaps. Take the thumbs and the fingers out, and then stick your butt back. And if you do this, you'll find it's not really much of a forward fold, although you're starting to find that the body's moving forward. From here, use an exhale to slide the hands past the knees and lift the hips so the shoulders stay in line with the hips. Now, I guess from the side, again, if you do it from here, you see it's like you're kind of sitting down slightly and then sliding the hands past the knees. Then bend the knees to take the hands above the knees, then raise back up. It's a tiny bend in the knees that takes the tension out of the hips and hamstrings, takes the tension out of the lower back, and allows you to maintain length in your spine as you fold forward. So if you do this a few times, hands above the knees, bend the knees to get them there. As you extend the legs, you slide the hands forward. Notice how I'm not lifting or lowering the chin. The idea is that I'm not moving from my neck. I'm not moving from my chest. I'm moving from bending the knees, extending the legs, and letting the hips line up with the shoulders, bending the knees, and going up. So do this a few times, keeping the core engaged, keeping the neck long, keeping the eyes and the nipples pointing in the same direction, and you'll find that you're able to find a longer spine because you're using your lower body to make the forward fold happen. Keeping the core engaged, you can extend now the arms down to the ground using that same movement. Bend the knees, hands to the thighs, extend the legs, hands slide below the knees, and then take the hands to the bricks. Now, notice if you can do this, that it's easy, the tendency is to reach the hands forward and round through the spine, and it, what it does is it just kind of chokes you off. You want to have length. So if you're able to push the fingertips into the bricks or push the hands into the bricks, you might find that it's going to help lengthen the distance between the hips and the shoulders, long spine. So come in one more time from the beginning, hands above the knees, bend the knees to get them there, extend the legs to slide the hips um, in line with the shoulders, take the hands to the bricks, spread the toes and look at your feet. Now let's work from the ground up here. Your feet don't have to be touching, they can be, but try to have them hip distance apart. Spread the toes wide, hands to the bricks, and you can see the bricks are in line with the toes, and simply find this line right here, shoulders, elbows, wrists, through the ground, same on the other side, shoulders, elbows, wrists, through the bricks, into the ground. If you need to bend the knees, don't try to lock them out. Have a tiny unlocking of the knees. Take the pressure out of the hamstrings and use your breath to soften into this posture. Now, every time I go down and up, if, I just, if I'm in this forward fold and I just throw my shoulders back, I put a lot of pressure on my lower back. And if you already have a tight lower back or a pain in your lower back, this is going to aggravate that. So if you have any tension in this part of your body, use the bending of the knees, the sliding of the hands below the knees and the hands to the bricks or the shins if you want to, to find that length in that forward fold. 
Now from here, if you want to lower the chest more and the head towards the ground, use the exhale to fold from there. And on the way back up, you can still push the hands into the bricks to lift the shoulders in line with the hips on a horizontal plane and lift the shoulders in line with the elbows and the wrists and then fold back from there. So if you segment your forward fold a few times, you'll notice that you're able to use different parts of your body to make this happen. So that it's not just fold forward at hips, it's using the different joints and muscle groups that support the skeleton to help make this forward fold more controlled, more happy and easy on the lower back, and a lot more comfortable. Now, of course, you can definitely fold forward to the hips, but everything has to work together to make that happen. So if you take your hands to your hips, navel draws in, spread the toes, feet hip distance apart, shoulders down the spine, take a breath in here, exhale even tiny bend in the knee as you engage in, and fold forward, you're gonna use the thighs a lot more to support a gentle fold at the hips. And don't just flop down, don't let the chin lead it, let the spine lead the movement. And then as you begin to lower down, if you extend the legs, it's gonna give you more space to get the head towards the ground. Now, if the hands touch the ground, don't just flop them down. You can actually press into the ground, lift the shoulders up a bit, and then still allow yourself a few moments to relax and release while keeping downward pressure so you don't just check out while you're folding forward. You check in to your alignment of your body. Now, if you look at me from the side, you'll see my legs aren't fully straight here. I have a tiny bend in the knees. And even if I'm on the bricks, I still keep a tiny bend in the knees and a tiny bend in the elbows, and I fold forward from here. Once I get comfortable, then I can work on the full extension or reaching in different parts and variations. When I'm coming back up, always engage the core first. If I have my hands on the hips, that's fine. Shoulders down the spine, tiny bend in the knees. See how that lifts the shoulders right away? Then I bring the weight into the heels. I begin to extend the legs and I lift back up. It's very easy to make this flashy and fancy. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about how it looks on the outside. Bring awareness to how it feels on the inside. Core, knees bending, hips moving, lowering from the heart, not moving the chin, but using the spine to move the neck. Now, there are a bunch of different variations that you can have in your forward folds, and we can talk about a few of the basic ones you'll see. Now, there's Uttanasana, which is your forward fold. And then once you get down there, there's a whole host of things. You have these little things called peace fingers, right? You can do Padagustasana, which is basically finger to toe. When you get down there, you can take your peace fingers to the inside of the big toes, thumbs to the outside, and you can use that to draw in and down. There's also pada hastasana, which is hand and foot connection. Pada being foot, hast being hand, asana being masana, big deal, right? But what you want to do is once you get down there, if you can reach the hands to the ground, you slide the fingertips towards the toes and the toes towards the wrists. And basically, it's a very oversimplified handstand, so to speak. Now, another one you might hear often is Prasarita Pado Tanasana, which is essentially a wide-legged forward fold. Take your feet wider than your hips, turn the toes slightly in. You can still bend the knees, hands to the hips. Navel draws in, shoulders down the spine. Now, don't move from the chin lifting up or down. Try to have the heart stack the shoulders in line with the hips horizontally. And then when you get down halfway, you can still keep the hands on the hips and hug into the hips, or you can take the hands down to the bricks if you want, and then fold from there. But don't let the elbows go out. Draw the elbows in so the shoulders stay long, extending towards the hips, and the neck hangs easy. Coming back up, don't worry about keeping those legs straight. If you want to roll the spine up to feel good, go for it. Think about always pouring weight through the body, through the legs, into the ground. Forward folds, seemingly simple and easy, but very challenging if you want to go down that rabbit hole. It's okay to spend time focusing on the different parts of the body that work to make these asanas work for you. The most important thing is it feels good. So take time for yourself, see what works in your body, and then use it every time you try the practice. So how'd all that land for you? Hopefully it sparked a fire. And if you're looking to fan the flame, 
Head over to diet.com and enter the promo code AVERAGEJOGA, J-O-G-A. You're going to have access to a lot more classes from myself and a host of amazing teachers from around the world of all shapes, styles, and colors. By all means, let this serve as a great foundation to build a home practice on that you can have for the rest of your life. Enjoy. Enjoy. Enjoy.